Hello guys and welcome to DataSol Cloud. So today I'll be illustrating to you guys how to create an EC2 instance. So an EC2 instance is like a server that is hosted on Amazon Cloud. So I'll be showing you how to create a Windows EC2 instance. And then I'll also show you how to connect to the Windows EC2 instance. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So just press the button up here to sign in into the console. So for this demonstration, I'll be signing in as an IAM user. You can either choose to sign in as an IAM user or you can choose to sign in as the root user. So I'm gonna type in my IAM username or rather the IAM username that I'll be using for this illustration and my password. And as you can see, we have signed in into our account. This is the I am username. And this right here will be your account number. Up here, you will have the region in which you want to launch your resources in. If you click on the drop down menu here, you will find out that there are other regions. So before you create your EC2, make sure you select the region that you want to launch your instances into, or maybe your resources into. So we're going to do a launch in the Oregon region for this demonstration. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So up here on the search bar, search for EC2, you can either do this and then the ec2 will be displayed here so you can either do this or alternatively you can just click on services and then go to compute and then the ec2 so this is a virtual server in the cloud let's open it in a new tab and as you can see i don't have any instances running so i'm going to go ahead and launch an instance in order for you to launch an instance you just click on this button here let me click on it and then launch instance. I'll call this instance DataSol demo. And then you need to choose your application or operating system image. That is the AMI. AMI standing for Amazon Machine Image. For this demonstration, we will be using a Windows AMI. If you want to launch other AMIs, as you can see down here, there are other AMI types. So there is the Amazon Linux, there's the Mac OS, there's the Ubuntu. But ours today will be majoring with the Windows. So I'm going to select on Windows. And then when you scroll down, you're going to notice that you can see the description of the AMI that you've chosen, the AMI ID, and the architecture. Moving on, we're going to select the instance type. So for the instance type, for this demonstration, I'll be using a free tier instance type. So what I usually like doing is click on this drop down menu, the drop down menu right here. When I click on the drop down menu, you will find out that there are many instance types that you can launch. There's a whole lot of lists of instance types. But what I like doing is just typing free and then I'll see the free tier eligible instance types. So for this demonstration, I'll be using the T2 micro moving on to this is the section for the key pair. This is the key pair that you will be using to SSH with, or maybe the one that you will use to decrypt your password. So I'll create a new key pair. I had already created a key pair, but we're not going to use that. So let me create a new one. You just click on create new key pair. The key pair name, I'm gonna call it DTSOL demo. And then after you've given the key pair a name, you can either choose to have the private key file format in a .pem file format. This one is for using with OpenSSH on Linux, but the .ppk is if you want to programmatically access your instance using PuTTY. This is for Windows. Is it party? Okay. After you've done all that, click on Create Key Pair. And after you've clicked on click Create Key Pair, you'll notice that the key pair file has been downloaded here to your machine downloads. Now let's go on to the network settings. In case you don't specify 
a VPC for your network, it will use the default Amazon VPC. We don't want this. So I'm gonna click on edit. When I click on edit, you find out that I don't have any VPCs. If you click on the drop down here, I only have the Amazon VPC that's there by default. So in order for me to create a VPC, I'll just come up here and search VPC and then open it in a new tab. So this is a VPC dashboard. And as you can see, I only have one VPC. That is the default VPC. It's got four subnets. So I don't wanna use that. So I'll go ahead and create a VPC from up here. A VPC is like a virtual private cloud. It's like a network of your own. You choose the IP that you want. You choose the subnets. Let me walk you through all that. So you click on create VPC. You click on VPC and more. And then for the name, maybe I can call it Dittesol. When I just call it Dittesol, you will notice down here that it can add the slash VPC automatically for me. And then the, for the IPv4 CIDR block, I'm gonna leave it as that. And then for the tenancy, for the tenancy, this is where you choose whether you want a default tenancy. This is where you share the same hardware. And as you can see, there is the default and the dedicated. Dedicated is where you don't share hardware, okay? And on the number of availability zones, I'm going to select one. But if you want, you can have two or three. It's advisable for you to have two or three so that you don't have a single point of failure. Just in case one availability zone goes dead, you still remain in the other one that's been hosted on the other availability zone. So I'm gonna select one for now. And then I won't change any of these settings. We don't need the NAT gateway for now because we're not launching any instances in the private subnet. The NAT gateways are used to connect the instances that are running in the private subnet. After you've done all that, you just click on create VPC and then the VPC will start creating. As you can see, it's creating. After it's done creating, you will get a success message telling you that your VPC has been created successfully. So you can view the VPC here. Okay. So since we've created the VPC and it's called BTSOL VPC, I'm going to go back to the tab where we were launching our instance. And I'll try to refresh by clicking on this icon right here to see whether my VPC has reflected. And as you can see from the dropdown, we now have DTSOL VPC with us. So I'll click on it. And then for this subnet, I'm going to make sure that the subnet is available. So maybe it hasn't refreshed. I'm going to click on this to refresh. And then as you can see, it has already detected the subnets available. So there's the public subnet and the private one. We are launching our instance on the public subnet. And then on the auto assign public IP, I'm going to enable this because I want my instances to be assigned a public IP automatically. And then for the firewall, we can create a security group. Maybe we call it DTSOL SG, meaning a security group. And then on this security group description, we're going to say that we will allow RDP connections from anywhere. So this anywhere means that we can allow from anywhere IPv4, okay? So on the inbound security group rules, I'm going to select RDP. It's already selected for me. And then the source type is anywhere. Anywhere meaning that this CIDR block. It can come from any public IP. Since we're using IPv4, it will come from any internet source. You don't need to do the advanced network configuration, but we can see what's there. You really don't need this for now. And then you can configure the storage you need for the root volume. I'm going to leave it as the default 30 GB. And then you can either choose whether you want the general purpose SSD, the GP2, the GP3, or maybe the provision IOPS SSD. Different SSDs or maybe hard disks have different operability. We will merge into that really soon. I'll explain it all to you. But for now, I think the storage is well configured. So on the advanced details, we won't be doing anything here. But later on, we might need to probably do something. For example, if you wanted to install, let's say, an Apache server, you can even write it on the user data so that when you launch the instance, the Apache server will be running by default. After you've configured all those details, you come here on the summary pane. This is a summary pane. So you make sure that all the information you selected is correct. So, and right here, you can see this thing that your first year 
it includes 750 hours of T2 micro. So you will get 750 hours per month for this T2 micro instance type. There's more details. Please go and read on them. I can't explain them all to you through this tutorial. After you've reviewed all that information, we just click on launch instance. As you can see, our instance was launched successfully. If you want to see the log of the launch, you can see right here. So it's finished in initializing the request, creating security groups, and this has finished the launch initiation. So in case you want to see whether your instance has launched, you just click down here on view all instances. And as you can see, this is our instance, and this is the instance ID. The instance name is Dutasol Demo, and the instance state is pending. The instance type is T2 Micro, and then the status check. So we have to wait for this status check to bring something of the sort. This means that it has checked all the statuses. So it will bring something that's two out of two. In order for you to see whether that has happened, you can keep on clicking on this refresh icon up here. You can click on it to see whether it has finished. So it's initializing, it's initializing the status check. You can keep on refreshing to see whether it's finished. It's still initializing. Let's give it some time. So you're going to wait until the status check has changed to this state before you can connect to your instance. And then after doing all that, you're going to just select on your instance here and then click on connect. And as you can see, the connect is not active right now because we've not selected the instance that we want to connect to. So I'm going to select the instance and then it becomes active and then I will click on connect. So when you click on connect, it will bring you to this page for connect to your instance. So I'm going to shift to the RDP client. And as you can see, here's our public DNS that we will be connecting to. And then we need to get the password file from the key pair that we created. So before further ado, I'll make sure I download the remote desktop file. This is what we will be using to connect to the instance. So click on download remote desktop file and then the file will be downloaded here to your downloads folder and then click on get password. Here, you need to upload your private key file so that you can decrypt your password. So I'll click on upload private key file and then the, file, the key file is on downloads. So I'm going to click on downloads and then click on the key file that we downloaded and click on open. After you would click on open, now it's time to decrypt your password. Click on decrypt password. And as you can see, this is the password that we have decrypted. I've blurred it out for security. After you've decrypted your password, now it's time for you to connect to your Windows instance using RDP. So I'm gonna click on the remote desktop file we downloaded and it's right here. I don't need to go to download. Okay, we need the username and the password in order for us to log into this RDP. So I'm gonna click on the file I downloaded and connect. And then here I'll click on more choices because I want to enable this username to be active. I don't want to use this username. So I'll click on more choices and use a different account. On the username, I'll use the administrator. And then on the password, I'll paste the password that I copied and then click on okay. And then it will bring you some pop-up here. The identity cannot be verified. So you have to connect anyway. So I'll click on yes. So it's going to take a while to load. It's like installing a new operating system on your computer. That's what I've done by launching that instance. So this is the first time we are booting up the computer. That is the EC2 instance in the cloud. And as you can see, it's a Windows 10 instance. Let me minimize it for you guys to see. So do you want to allow other PCs? Okay, I'll say no. And as you can see, it's a Windows instance. This is the start menu. It's it's like a computer in the cloud. If you want to test whether it's in the right region, I usually look at here, up here. Up here, there's the details for the instance that you've already launched. But in order for you to test better, I like going to the browser that is installed by default. So that is the Microsoft Edge. And then I'll do a what is my IP address to identify my location. It's loading. Let's give it time. So here. I'll type what is my, okay. 
let's first uh, set up the browser. It's the first time I'm opening it. So I'll, I'll just type in something like what is my IP address. So once you've searched for what is my IP address, this is the first link. You click on the first link. So as you can see, this is the IP address of the machine that we launched. This is not my local IP address. And then the internet service provider is Amazon Technologies. And then where the instance is located is in Portland, that is in Oregon, in the United States. That's it about launching an EC2 and connecting from it with RDP. I hope you enjoyed it. More sessions coming through. I'll see you in the next session. Bye-bye.